Hello and welcome to the Shite. I am Zen and I'm here with an introductory video of the IELTS for you. Well, you could take uh, one of the two, academic or general IELTS, academic for studies and general for immigration or for promotion at work. Now, there are two things which are common between the two, that is listening and speaking. Exactly the same, no difference. But when it comes to reading and writing, they are a bit different. We'll talk about them uh, when we talk about them in details. Well, speaking is either the first or the last. So when you go for a speaking test, uh, the test will last for about from anywhere between 11 to 14 minutes. The first part is going to be a one-on-one -on -one conversation between you and the examiner, where the examiner will talk to you about familiar topics that relate to your life, things around you, about your work, about your studies, about what you do, family, and things that you know really well about. In the second part, the examiner will give you a cue card, which will have a question written on it. You will have a minute to prepare that answer, and then about two minutes to talk about it. Now, in here, it's pretty important that you have a minute to prepare, but that doesn't mean that you can write your answer and then read it out. That's not possible. So I would suggest you to practice take just writing the key words, not the things in detail. Then in the third part of the test, the examiner will talk to you about an abstract topic where the examiner is interested in knowing whether you can express your opinions, your views, and your thoughts about things or not. So this is how the IELTS speaking test goes. It will be a one-on-one -on -one conversation between you and an examiner. You will be sitting on the other side of the table, just like you're looking at me. Imagine I'm the examiner and you are the test taker. That's how it's gonna be. So first test will be the listening test. Well, which has four parts. Part one is a conversation between two people in a social context, in an everyday context. For example, it could be between a university representative and a student. It could be between a seller and a buyer. So that's how it is. There are 10 questions in each part. There are four in total, 10 each, 40 questions. And you have around 30 minutes for all four sections. At the end of uh, these 30 minutes, you'd be given 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. So write quickly on the question paper. Even if you can use abbreviations, perfect, because you would be given time to fix those or to check those. The second part of uh, the IELTS listening test is a monologue where a person would be talking in a social context about, uh, let's say, he would be giving a speech about a social achievement of his and that he wants to share with people. There are 10 questions again, and you have to answer all of them. You'll be given the instructions that you need to follow. There will be a break in the middle, let's say the first five questions, uh, and then the last five. So let's say from 11 to 15, and then from 16 to 20. Same is the case with the first part. There are 10 questions, there will be a break in the middle too. The third part of the test is a conversation between uh, up to four people. They could be three, they can be four. It's usually a university professor and his students who are discussing an assignment or a paper that the students have to write. And um, what usually goes on is that you have to pay attention to who said what. What did the professor say? What did the student say? So it's really important. To confuse you even more, they usually have a male student and a female student. So you need to pay attention to who said what. Then the last part is a monologue again, but this time it's an academic subject and there will be a lecture about it. So you have to listen carefully to it. It's usually the most difficult part, although some students find the third part more difficult. There are 10 questions again, but there's a catch. In section four, there is no break. Unlike section one, two, and three, where there are breaks in the middle. Uh, but in section four, no break, only, you have only one go, you have to go through all the questions and then you have to answer. So my tip to you is, as soon as the section three is over, start reading the questions of section four, so that you have more time to go through all the 10 questions, because you won't have much time to go through all the questions if you relax after section three or part three. At the end of your listening test, you'd be given 10 minutes to transfer your answers to the answer sheet. And when you're transferring the answers from your booklet to the answer sheet, be very careful. 
that you note everything into the answer sheet properly. For example, question number nine should go into question number nine, not one, two, three, four. So if you've missed a question, miss the, uh, miss the space on the answer sheet too, because once the time is up, they will collect everything from you. And this minute mistake could actually cost you. So when you're transferring your answers to the answer sheet, please check that you've written number one in one and 40 in 40. Okay. Right, that's the end of your listening part. Now let's talk about IELTS reading. The IELTS reading test is a 60 minute long test, which has 40 questions divided into three passages. Passage one, passage two, and passage three. It's the same for both academic and general, though the general passages are a bit different from uh, the academic passages. Right, so reading is a difficult part for a lot of students because of a few reasons. Because reading checks your logic, it checks uh, your skills to find information, and it also checks your vocabulary. So it's not just that you need to be good at English, you need to be logically good too if you want to answer and get a good score in reading. Uh, because there are three passages, passage one, passage two, and passage three, Overall, there are 40 questions, so they could be anywhere between 11 to 15 in each passage. For example, if the first one has 12, the second one could have 13, and the last one could have 15. And uh, most people find reading passage 3 to be the most difficult one, reading passage 2 a little easier, and reading passage 1 to be the easiest, but that's not always the case. Sometimes it depends upon uh, what your educational background is. Maybe the third passage is something that you know really well about, so you could be lucky on that day. So the type of questions that you might get during the test could vary from simple uh, identifying writer's opinion, it could be uh, blanks, it could be matching the headings, it could be multiple choice questions, it could be matching features, matching sentence endings, it could be summary completion, note completion, it could be a table completion, Sometimes you even get flow charts, and the other times, if you are lucky or unlucky, it doesn't matter. I mean, it depends what if you really like the diagrams or not. Sometimes there is diagram labeling too, and there are short questions too at times. So there are 40 questions in total, and each question carries one mark. There is no negative marking. So if you're finding a question really hard, leave it, go on. Maybe the next question is going to be easier for you. So this is your academic reading test. Now, what's the difference uh, between the academic and the general reading test? Let's look at the similarities first. The similarities are that there are 40 questions. Now, uh, the reading passage three is just like the academic test, but reading passage one and reading passage two are different. Now, let's have a look at reading passage one. It's usually about life skills and it's not just a single passage. The reading passage one may consist of two or three subtexts, and these subtexts could even have like six or seven texts at time, depending upon what they are. For example, if it's, um, if it's let's say, a classified page from a newspaper, there could be like six or seven ads of uh, jobs, or there could be six or seven advertisements of, uh, let's say, restaurants. So reading passage two is more job oriented. It's about the job skills, things that you need in a work environment. Again, there are two passages, short ones. Uh, that's why the first 25 or 26 questions are usually really easy, but because they're easy, because the passages are shorter, the sub passages, I mean, are shorter, the marking is tougher. So to, just to give you a hint, in the academic test, to score a six, you need 24 correct answers. But in general, for the same score, you would need to score 30 correct answers. And this is why the marking is a little tougher. But general test is easier. Okay. Well, now we're going to talk about IELTS writing. In IELTS writing, uh, there are two questions, task one and task two. Task one carries one third of the marks and task two carries two thirds of the marks. That's why the time distribution is according to the marks as well. You get 20 minutes for task one and you get 40 minutes for task two. Okay, now 
Task one for general students is a letter. There could be a variety of topics, there could be a variety of types of letters that you would be asked to write, but in the real test, there will only be just one letter that you need to write. You'll have 20 minutes to uh, analyze, plan and write your letter and you need to write at least 150 words. The upper limit, I would say 180. If you write 200 or plus, that could go against you. Now, uh, the task two, you'll have 40 minutes for it. Uh, but task one for the academic writing is a graph. Well, there are, there are a variety of graphs like uh, the line graphs, the pie charts, the bar charts, the tables, the flow charts, maps, sometimes simple uh, scheme diagrams, and you could even get some plans and cycles. Again, you'll have 20 minutes to analyze, plan and write your answer. And uh, then you can write about 150 words minimum. The upper limit is the same again, 180. You'll be checked for four things. That is your task achievement, like how well have you answered the question? Have you fulfilled all the requirements of the question? Second thing, cohesion and coherence. The third part is your lexical resource, your vocabulary that is. And the fourth is your grammar. And in grammar, they check your grammar range and grammar accuracy. Task two is pretty much a similar one. You'd be given a question that you need to write an essay about of at least 250 words. You'll have 40 minutes for doing so. You need to analyze your question, you need to plan it and then write it. The upper limit, I would say around 280 to let's say 300 maximum. But I would say if you remain below 300, that's better for you because if you write 50 words more than you've been asked to, I don't think some examiners like it.